I'm here today, cheers, with Danae Branson from Elite Design Assistance. So cheers, Danae, we go up to the camera and we go cheers. Cheers. This is, this is the only way anybody can drink now is through Zoom. Like it's, let me have a sip first. Have you been having Zoom happy hours or conversations with family? celebrations or anything like that yes we have i've got a group of college girlfriends we've been doing zoom happy hours i've got groups of family members we've been doing zoom happy hours everyone wants to do a zoom happy hour <laughs> which is great great way to stay connected with everybody from all, of course my cut or my family's all across the country so it's nice mm -hmm. to see everybody me too i was able to have get my father who's in vegas who's 84 years old had to think about that for a second did he turn 85 yet 84 years old i was able to talk him through clicking the zoom link and having a zoom conversation with me so i was very proud of that because that was not easy yeah <laughs> um yeah, so we had a similar situation with my grandparents they're 85 and it was like grandma if you want to click off the share your screen, you have to do this. But anyway, we got her figured out and it worked out really well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So say hi to us, everyone, as you're coming on. Let us know that you're here so we know we're not just talking to each other. Um, although I do know a lot of people do watch on replay. Um, but I'm happy that I'm still doing this weekend wind down, especially while we're going through this coronavirus um, lockdown, shutdown, social distancing, physical distancing, masks. It's honestly crazy. Are you tell me where you are? Yeah, so we are in Minnesota right now and we are in the shelter in place. So we are only to leave the house if we need essentials. And so it's been a quite interesting. I've got three children. One's home from college, a senior in high school, and a seventh grader. The senior and the seventh grader are also doing online education. And so is my college student. So everybody's home doing school or work. And it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it is really crazy. I mean, I am empty nest. I have uh, my 26-year-old lives by himself in New Paltz. Um, he was sick for literally four weeks, but it wasn't... Oh. Um, it wasn't uh, Corona, thank goodness. And my daughter lives with my ex-husband in on Long Island where I live, but she's a travel agent. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so she's been working yeah. from home. They haven't laid them off, uh, thankfully, because she's a corporate travel agent. So they'll, as soon as this lifts, corporations will be traveling again. And then my son, my youngest is in college but he has an apartment off of campus. And when this happened, we're like, you know what? Stay there. It's a less populated, he's in um, Fredonia, so it's less populated and he's safer there. So all him and his yeah. room stayed and they have their routine and they seem like they're doing quite well. Yeah. Better, better than we're doing here, I'd say. So tell us everyone was, as you come on, how, how you guys are surviving. Are you, are you alone at home? You have a husband? children or your homeschooling um share with us how you're fending against this now we want to make sure that we keep kind of normal topics on still how you can run your business effectively for when this lifts if you're currently not having a lot of business but right when before we came live danae and i were talking about how as a coach and as a person running a design assistant company, like some clients are still working. So mm -hmm. it's like interesting that we have some interior designers that are still fairly active, I'd say, and others that are like completely shut down, right? Danae, you're having the same thing. Yes, we definitely are. I've got some of my clients who have been reaching out just saying, I'm actually still pretty busy. It's somewhat business as usual. I definitely still need to continue to work with my design assistant. And I've had other clients who have said, you know, we're putting a lot of projects on hold. I don't have a lot of work right now for my design assistant. I really want to continue working with her. 
you know, once we kind of get through some of this, but it has just been kind of across the board. Yeah, it's really, it's, there seems to be no rhyme or reason. I'd say that definitely some of the designers are doing virtual consults. Now, I'm not saying yes. e-design per se, but virtual consults via Zoom or FaceTime, and they're able to still keep their businesses moving if they were in that stage where they weren't already installing or doing contract work where the contractors are not in areas where the contractors are not allowed to work anymore. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be going up and down too. In some states, they are working, and then they were told they were non-essential, but then they fought it, the contractors fought it, and then they were back on as being essential. It is literally state by state. It is. I mean, I'm in Minnesota, and I know contractors are essential here. They want to keep the economy moving forward. They need to keep you know, some of these people going. I know real estate agents are still helping people buy and sell property. So as of right now, that's still continuing. And that's a part of what I like too, is that people could be do virtual staging, but let's, let's address Robin here because um, homeschool the rest of the year. Yep. With anyone who has kids at home, they are being homeschooled. <clears throat> she got laid off. Are you getting a lot of designers or people who've gotten laid off calling you to say, I'd like to be a design assistant? I've had a few that have um, recently reached out. They've been let, let go and they're looking for other avenues, other you know income streams, other ways to kind of make a living. So I have definitely had some of those. I've also had a lot of interior designers who since they are maybe in a slow period are using this time to look ahead. And they're calling me now talking about my services and how we can help them so that when they're ready to kind of get their feet on the ground again, they've got some things in place to help them because I really think that the design industry is going to be super busy once everyone's ready to go back to a normal pace. I mean, you know, we're sitting in our homes and we're oh staring at the walls and we're staring at our decor and we're going to be ready for a change. So I think a lot of people are going to be really busy once this kind of all subsides. I agree. I've been doing um, many lives in my private Facebook group, the Interior Design Business Forum. If any of you are in there and you're in the interior design industry or support the interior design industry, please ask to join there. And I have been doing a lot of lives about exactly that, Danae, that people are sitting in their homes and surprisingly, most of them are probably not spending as much money as they used to, right? Because they're not traveling. They're not driving to as many places. They're not going to work and stopping at Dunkin' and 7-Eleven to get coffee, and then they're not eating out, they're not drinking out, they're not having dinner dates. And if you look at your bank account, it's probably oddly flatter than usual. Not spending right. as much money on the normal things. Now you're staring in your, at your house way too much, realizing how the kids are doing their homework, you know, on computers on the floor if you don't have desks for them, or you're not set up for all these people to be home. You're looking at your white walls or your window treatments or your kitchen and going, this is ridiculous. And I think a lot of people are going to start spending. I really do. On their homes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that it's going to be great for the interior design industry. So <laughs> when it's over, I definitely think yeah, it's hard it's now. Over. So yep. Leslie, Leslie was saying she she's using the time to work on her business. And I think that is the best use of time if you are not working right now, is working on your business. So she has her IT assistant helping with processes. So you still have design assistants who are working for designers that yes, are busy and who are working on their businesses. Yes. Yep. So I still have a uh, design assistants who are currently working with the interior designers that are still, you know, busy right now. And then, like I said, I have some interior designers who are just calling me and talking to me about what their needs are. And they're just kind of doing that whole working in their business. OK, when we get when we get back to whatever our new normal is, I need an assistant and this is what I'm looking for. So I'm kind of doing this groundwork now so that I'm ready to get going yeah love that so smart if you, if you could be making your phone calls now um and getting all your work your workers in place right 
uh, right. Diane is working yep. remotely. Zoom. See, Diane is doing exactly the way I would want her doing it, right? She's working remotely, Zooming client meetings, still designing, and her assistants are working from home. Yep. I think it's fascinating how I used to have, and still have, clients, interior design clients, who say, no, I need someone in my office. I need someone right here. And I'll go, do you really? Like, unless you really need someone to be going on site visits or going on appointments with you or picking and dropping off samples, do you actually need someone sitting in your office? And I think this is going to show a lot of more traditional home um, business owners who want the people in their office, they're going to realize how much can be accomplished when they're not sitting next to you. Do you agree? I totally agree. I mean, a business across the board is going to change after this. And I think a lot of people are going to see how much more productive they can be from home and how much productive their assistants can be. And I, I think it's a great, a great time to, you know, decide what, what they want to do when it goes back, if they want to continue working with people virtually or have them back in the office, whatever is their best fit and depending on what they're doing, obviously. But I think a lot of people are going to look at this and continue to work virtually. Yes, I agree. I just have to acknowledge Jeffrey here because last time you saw me, I was no makeup and in a ponytail and I actually did my hair today and got put makeup on. And look, I even put on earrings just for you guys. <laughs> I still do have the baggy pants on the bottom, though, I will tell you that. But um, I figure, you know what, it's Friday, and I should dress up a little bit, even though I'm going to be having my social happy hour with my Interior Design Society Long Island friends after this. Um, oh, fun. Yeah, at least we'll look good, we'll, we'll look good all together. Uh, so thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Isabella from Dubai. Hello, Isabella. How is... How is business in Dubai? Are you guys completely shut down? I'd be very curious about that. Um, I also want to know from everybody, and I'll keep going down the comments so I'm not forgetting anyone, who has applied for the Small Business Administration loan? I'd love to hear if you guys are doing that. It's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan from the uh, Small Business Administration. If you haven't, I highly recommend it. I don't see why you wouldn't. It's the one where they're hoping that they give, it's almost going to be a forgivable $10,000. They're going to give you an advance on a loan. Um, excuse me, Nelly. Always happens during weekend wind down at least once. Um, so as you guys are answering that, let's just see some other comments. Virginia, hubby and I are doing well. Been doing some overdue projects, painting, trying to conquer some overdue home projects. Exactly. Trying to get remote consultations, but no bites yet is the rest of that message. So yeah, don't give up trying though, Virginia, because as this goes on longer and longer, I think there's going to be more of that. And Danae, actually, I know nothing about this besides one sentence she said right before we went live. Talk to me about what you have going on now to help the designers with virtual design. Sure. So we have some clients that aren't doing uh, virtual design. They haven't done it before, but it's now a service they would like to start offering um, just because of the times. And so we have a program now where we can offer a design assistant would work with an interior designer. They can offer a couple different e-design, virtual design, whatever people call it. I like to kind of call it virtual design. But anyway, virtual design packages. And basically, it, it includes a onboarding client onboarding packet that would be branded specifically to the interior designer and her logo, her colors, everything, along with all the instructions of how a virtual design works and the deliverables and all of that. And we package it together. Um, once the interior designer gets a client and they want to use the service, then basically they can put the markup on that service to whatever they want. Um, but then they're working with the virtual design assistant on my team to actually, you know, execute that virtual design plan. Does that, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. I got to dig into this. Okay. Hold on. We're yeah. going to look at a couple of other comments and then I want to dig into that because I'm not sure I quite understand it. If I don't understand okay. it, no one 
probably does either. So um, Becky saying in the middle of a larger commercial project into construction document space, so still busy. Yeah, and plus running a home school and a husband and a cat and a puppy. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Um, Laurie had to visit an essential business last Friday, but we'll do as much remotely as possible. Yeah, I hope I hope you're wearing masks and trying to do your distancing. Um, really important. I'm skipping over a couple of them here. So I asked who, thank you, Virginia. She said I look pretty too. Um, Diana said she applied. Virginia has not applied yet. It's a first come first serve, guys. So apply for that small business administration loan. It literally took me seven minutes to apply for that. Um, Jeffrey, I've been trying to apply for PPP today. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the, the second loan. The first one I was talking about was the SBA small administration, small business. What am I, what am I saying wrong? Small business administration loan. It's the it's called the idle loan economic injury disaster loan application. You find it on the Small Business Administration, the SBA website. Took me seven minutes, easy breezy. The one that Jeffrey's now talking about is the other one that I have all kinds of paperwork on, which is the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. That's the one that has to be applied through your bank. I haven't checked yet to see if my bank is offering it, but not a lot of them are um, yet that I know of some of the smaller banks. So I think you have to look for a larger bank, but I haven't looked into that yet. I'm gonna know more information next week and I'll be going live in my group about that. So Jeffrey's saying it hasn't come through yet. Hope said, I don't think I'm qualified as a solo designer. Uh, you actually do qualify if you're a solopreneur or an LLC. So you do qualify for the small business administration. So check that out, go to that website. Okay, so let's go back to your package program. Is it a package? Explain to me again. If someone wants to offer virtual design or e-design, e -design, yep. they market it and they get, mm -hmm. they get someone who wants to use the service. What do you do? Mm -hmm. So then we would provide the interior designer with the information that the client would need. So like an onboarding package, which would tell them, the client, everything they need to do to be able to work with the designer doing an e-design project. And it's a really nice graphically designed onboarding packet. And it we brand it to the interior designer. So it looks like it's coming from them and their business with their logo, their colors. But it's really nicely laid out so that the client can look at that and say, oh, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to get this interior designer so that she can design this space for me. And then we design the space and then we send back. And of course, I don't have this all in front of me because we're rolling it out next week. But um, say we send back a floor plan, a concept board, a shopping list, which would have you know, the shopping list can go either way. If it has affiliate links, it's actually the interior designer's affiliate links. Or if the interior designer still wants to continue to do trade, you know, we can work with that as well. They would just um, do their trade sourcing there. But basically, we work with the interior designer to be able to offer this program to their clients. So nobody knows that it's coming from you guys. No. It's not, it's coming from the designer, but you're helping them put it together. Yes. And you have a design assistant helping the designer yes. roll this out. Yes, yep, yep. So the interior designer would talk with the design assistant about this is the process, this is how we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And the interior designer would then talk to their client and say, okay, I'm gonna send you this onboarding packet. I'm gonna send you a questionnaire. We're going to do a 20 minute consult or whatever it is, you know, virtual consult. And then they go from there, but it's all laid out. So both the interior designer knows what his or her responsibilities are and the client knows what they are to do and working together with the virtual design assistant. But like you said, the interior designer's client has no idea that it isn't coming directly from the interior designer and their firm or their business. So what are you calling this service? That's a good question. Like I said, we're rolling it out next week. So I'm not sure if I'm going to 
I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call it yet, an e-design package, or i got to figure out a name for it. Um, but we're rolling well, it out next it's, week. So. Is it a package that they buy, or is it a service that they purchase that gets managed on an ongoing basis anytime they have a e-design client or a virtual design client? Right, so the interior designer can market the service as they normally would their own services. Once somebody purchases that service from the interior designer is when then they would purchase the service from us. So they're not out any money. They wait till they get a client before they would actually come and purchase the service from us. Did you pick a price on this yet? Uh, no, we're working out those details on Monday. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, somebody just asked. Um, I'm looking at two different screens, so I, it's not up. I have to skip over a bunch of um, a bunch of these. Let me just go and check really quick. Yeah. Uh, so we answered that already for Hope. I do think you qualify for the Small Business Administration loan, so check that out, Hope. Virginia is saying, as a stager, we avoid calling it virtual, so not to confuse it with virtual staging, which is a no-no for stagers. Why? I'm not sure why, Virginia. Um, and then she clarified, I mean, calling the consultations remote versus virtual because virtual sounds like virtual staging, which is not a favorable option as a professional home stager. Okay. Okay. So you're calling it a consult. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Lori's home with her husband, audio video company owner, and both are applying for the program loans. Excellent. As it should be forgiven. Exactly. It's free money. It's free money. Okay, so let's talk about all the reasons why in a normal market or in this market, why somebody would hire a design assistant. What are all the things that they can do for an interior designer? Sure, so a lot of the reasons why someone would hire is if they are wanting to grow their business, obviously. They're wanting to expand, offer more services, maybe new services and they're looking for someone to help them or they're looking for someone to complement their strengths and you know and or weaknesses sometimes you look at your strengths and weaknesses and you hire to your weaknesses because you want someone who's strong where you're not to complement you in your business so a lot of times people would hire an assistant when they're wanting to grow they are going to hire an assistant if they are completely overwhelmed uh, they're working 15, 18 hour days. You cannot sustain that day after day, week after week, month after month. Um, it's not good for your health or, you know, your clients. Creative juices don't flow well when you're lacking sleep for days on end. It's so, true. Uh, yeah. So uh, another reason would be because you are, um, maybe you find yourself procrastinating certain tasks. A lot of times interior designers call me they want their virtual design assistant to pick up the services or tasks that they don't like to do themselves. They find after a long site visit, they come back to the office and they don't want to do whatever it may be, you know, admin, invoicing, sourcing, whatever it is. So to keep your business going, you need to hire an assistant to maybe help you where you're not finding joy anymore in certain tasks. And obviously we all know the interior design industry is very unique because you have creative and you have business. So it's like your left brain fights with your right brain all day long. Yes, and some is. people can break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's really important that designers set their prices in a way that allows them to have an assistant. A yep. lot of them are not charging enough and then they go, I, I don't have the money to hire an assistant and i'm going to tell you also in this environment right now the clients who have worked with me for long enough that they actually have three to six months worth of um cushion in their bank account against their expenses are the ones who aren't panicking right now because i've taught them how to set themselves up where they actually are okay for a few months and the ones who haven't worked with me for that long or haven't worked with me, a lot of them are the ones that are just like, they have to fire their staff, they have to get rid of their assistant right away in order to survive. Where if you had some type of a savings account or 
a cushion against your expenses in your account, right now you could be like, okay, it stinks that I'm not getting any business, and it does. However, for the next three months, I'm going to keep my design assistant on and, and keep working on background stuff. Right. Absolutely. So, I know. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I know right now I myself have a couple personal assistants that work for me personally, you know, on Elite. And I've, I'm seeing, you know, some decrease in clients and everything, but they are still working with me because I want to keep them busy and I want to keep things going moving forward. Yes, it's definitely the time. Like it's a, it's, it's really a time to pivot to working on, um, it, you know, in your business, getting your social media set up and strong. You could do a year's worth of planning on your social media posts right mm -hmm. now, right? If I hear all the time, I don't have time to learn QuickBooks. I don't have time to learn MyDoma or Ivy or Studio Designer, whatever you use. I've never dug into really using it well because I've never had the time. So guess what? Now you have the time um, to do their websites. Now, do you have design assistants that help with websites as well? Yes. Yep. We pretty much do a lot of different things. The websites, the marketing, the bookkeeping, admin, social media management, and the creative side, the 3D renders, floor plans, concept boards, all that kind of stuff as well. So you're like a matchmaker for the designer, once you get to yes. know them, do they start with you? Yes, yep, interior designers call me. I visit with them about what they're looking for, their goals and expectations. Some of them are very specific and like I need somebody who does chief architect or who knows my DOMA or you know, can create graphics in Canva. And so if they're very specific, I can match them with someone who has that those skills and talents that they're looking for. On the flip side, I'll have an interior designer that'll call and just say, I need somebody who can do really good 3D renders and I don't even care what program it's in, just get me someone who can do a good job at that. So it just depends on that interior designer and what their goals and expectations are for working with a virtual design assistant. So how many design assistants do you have at any given time? Um, I typically... We, sorry, we had a delay to tap into. So if, if you get 20 designers calling you at the end of this COVID thing, like are you able to right. supply enough design assistance for everyone all the time? Uh, yeah, I typically have around 50 virtual design assistants. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And if you match somebody with a design assistant and they're not satisfied, they want to change, how does that work? Because that could be awkward. Yeah, they just contact me. Um, but in the very beginning, when I match them with someone, I still have them visit with that design assistant on the phone just to make sure they think it's a good fit personality wise, because I truly want it to be a long term fit, even though we do have an as needed contract. I'm looking for long term fits for people. It just makes the most business sense. And so we also will let them view any examples. So if they're really looking for something specific like renders or, you know, AutoCAD uh, drawings, elevations, any of that, we have examples we can give them. So they know the kind of work their virtual design assistant is capable of before they even then talk to that assistant to make sure it sounds like it's going to be a good fit. And we also want to make sure it's a good fit for turnaround times. Um, you know, every interior designer has a little bit different goals and expectations. We want to make sure that their assistant meets those goals and expectations. Okay. And, okay. We we're going back to when we were talking about the packages for the e-design that you are yep. creating a service for designers who want to offer virtual or e-design. Who right. sets that package cost? Hope is asking. Like, so you okay. have your cost to the designer and then who sets the package cost for the end user? Right, so I would send the interior designer the package cost that they would be paying elite design assistance. And then the interior designer can decide to charge whatever they want. I can give them some recommendations of what I've seen other people charging for the same service out there, but they are able to set their own pricing. 
for and their does the, And does the design assistant come with that package or then it's ours? Yeah. Oh, it does. Nope. The design assistant comes with the package. So it's just a package rate. And with that, you get all the deliverables, the design assistant and everything in that package. Okay. So you know what the cost is going to be. How do you do that when you don't know how many items a person might need in their living room or their family room? Right. Well, we have, um, like I would give them a package guide of these are the deliverables and this is what they're doing. But these virtual design assistants have done this enough that they kind of know a range of a simple living room versus a really um, not simple living room, <laughs> a more extensive living room. So they kind of average that out. And so they are comfortable just invoicing me a package rate for the service. And this is what they and I have the deliverables that I would give to the interior designer. This is what you're getting for this price. So it, it just works. It's been working out well with the ones that have tried it so far. I love it. I love it. Okay. So hope you would set your own price based on what kind of margin you want to get on top of what elite design assistance is charging, which yep. makes, makes perfect sense. Okay. So hi, Melissa. <laughs> um, how okay i think we covered this a little bit before but shannon's asking how do i become an elite design assistant sure basically i just ask people to email me a resume and references and maybe some uh portfolio or examples of your work and then i review that and then i would reach out to that person to schedule a phone interview and we go from there okay and dale is asking do your design assistants work in Squarespace websites? They do. That's one of the more popular ones, the Squarespace. So actually creating a website or more a design assistant who knows how to maintain it? Um, they've actually done both. They, I have some of them that actually create the websites. And then I do have others that maybe are just doing maintaining. Um, it just kind of depends on what the interior designer needs based on how I match them with a design assistant. Okay, so we need to go back because I never said to you, and this is a good time. How did you get into this business? Sure. So I have been running a virtual assistant company for the last 11 years. So I was already in the virtual assistant space. And then I have also have an interior design background. But of course, I never thought to put those two together 11 years ago <laughs> until, um, <laughs> um, until somebody brought it to my attention um, that they were an interior designer. They knew my background in interior design. And they were like, I know you run a virtual assistant company. I'm not sure you work directly with the interior design industry. But how would that look if you hired, got me an assistant? And I thought, well, gosh, I could probably do that. So I got somebody an assistant. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. And I started finding people that I had already networked with and known over the years in the interior design industry that were interested in either becoming an assistant or hiring an assistant. And it just kind of went from there. It's such a niche market. And all of the design assistants on my team um, have, you know, interior design education and interior design backgrounds, interior design experience. So they really know what it's like to be in the trenches with an interior designer and all the multiple moving pieces and they know the lingo and they know the platforms and all of that kind of good stuff. So then it just kind of, like I said, snowballed from there. Once I started really narrowing down into that specific niche. Well, you know what, if you, you, if you know me, you know, I'm known for niche is rich and broad is broke. So I think it was brilliant, honestly. <laughs> Um, when I first started coaching, I did that whole broad thing and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm not even taking my own advice. And then I thought the same thing. Like my, my history is in the interior design world. Why am I not coaching interior designers specifically? Yeah. And I'm sure you still have some other clients who you provide design uh, assistance for virtual assistance for, or did you go out of that space completely? No, I actually branched um, off. So I have two uh, sectors of the business now. 
And one sector of the business is in the financial space, actually, in the financial industry. And that is a completely different set of virtual assistants. And then the other branch of the business is now the interior design industry. And again, that's a completely different set of uh, virtual assistants. Interesting. So you, you named them two different companies. Yes. So I have two different companies, two different websites. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Because I coach other service providers as well, not just interior designers. Um, but I don't okay. market it. They just come to me. So okay. I've, I've been recently going, hmm, do I set up another whole company or do I just branch out? Because I'm my name, right? Really. Uh, yeah. So it was interesting for me to hear how you did it. So Linda's asking, uh, wait, let me go above one, one message above that. Hold on. So are the deliverables all sight unseen? And then she asked a second, like are purchased sight uneven? I think she meant unseen. So not sure what you're talking about, Linda. Do you mean that? I'm not sure what you mean, Linda. Give us a little bit more. Do you do you understand, Danae? Well, I'm not sure I understand exactly, but the design assistant is going to send it into your designer all the deliverables so that they can make sure that they're all on the same page. If there's something she needs, the design assistant needs to go back and tweak, they can certainly do that. But everything comes from the interior designer to the client. So the virtual design assistant is never sending anything to a designer's clients. It's always gets sent to the interior designer for the interior designer to then, you know, forward on. Does that make sense? Is yeah, that it makes sense. And I think that was exactly what Linda probably needed to hear. So Linda, this is just like you having an assistant in your own office yeah. sitting next to you. You are the boss. You are directing the activities. You are telling them what to source, what style, from where, you're not just handing over a job and saying you're doing everything and it's going to look like it's me. You're still the boss. So that's where um, maybe there was a little misinterpretation. I, I'm, I'm guessing because I'm not sure. Let us know, Linda, if that answered your question. Okay, and Hope is asking, would your VA work in my specific apps to do the work or do they use their own? So the, they work in an interior designer's, um, whatever the interior designer needs them to work in, if that's what she's asking, um, they would work in those things. So if you need someone to do IV, they're going to work in IV. If you need someone to do my DOMA, they're going to work in my DOMA. So we really want it to be like a true assistant. They're just virtual. Um, is that, if that's what she's asking. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what she's asking. I mean, when I, I have seven virtual assistants basically uh some yep. of them are manager levels some of them are more techie um others handle more client management and help with my facebook but i'm running the company right so i'm the one who has the meeting i'm the one who's delegating what they're doing i'm the one who's keeping track but every design assistant not design assistant, every assistant that I hire, every virtual assistant, I check to see what programs they know, to see whether they know most of the programs that I use to run this company. And if they don't, but they have the ability to learn, I may be able to still bring them on if, they're, you know, if they agree to use my programs. And it's the same with your assistants. Yeah, it's the exact same. Now, occasionally I will have an interior designer that'll come to me and maybe not use something like something simple, like say a sauna or Trello. They maybe aren't currently using that, but they want to start using that. So they will ask the design assistant, what are you using? Let's start that, you know, um, something like that. Sometimes we are offering advice to the interior designer. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they're definitely using whatever the interior designer already has in place and is comfortable with. So we use both Asana and Trello for different things because we start out using Trello and I'm really attached to Trello for certain functions. So uh, that's where I keep track of all my client progress and all our meetings. But we use Asana for all our standard operating procedures and to make sure the staff is, is on top of any new rollouts or for the standard weekly and monthly to-dos. 
So one of the things that's really important for everyone to hear that right now is a great time to be documenting your procedures. You'll hear me say SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. Documenting them just like they were in physical binders, if you're old like me and you remember when your <laughs> procedures were in binders, now procedures are step-by-step -step on how to do things can be held in programs, project management programs like Asana or Trello. So they wanted to hire a design assistant right now and just say, just help me get all my procedures documented. That's all I want to focus on for the next month while we're in quarantine here. Mm -hmm. They're able to do that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Will the assistant also teach them how to use Trello or Asana or whichever is recommended to them? Yes, they will. Yep, See, they'll tell them all the tips and tricks and the best ways to work with that. See, I love this. So I'm going to tell everyone, go apply for the, the Small Business Administration loan <laughs> yep. and use that money to get your business in order, right? In my, uh, uh, Danae's doing an extra training for my membership site. She's doing it next week on really specifically when to hire. Um, and we do it together, basically. That's all the trainings in my membership site. I do them mostly together with my experts. When to hire a design assistant, what they can do for you. Uh, what to look for. You're covering so much in this training and really getting really specific, um, which I'm so grateful for you doing for my membership site. If there was like, what's the top piece of advice you would give somebody about when they're hiring an assistant, what they should look for? Mm -hmm. um, they should obviously really take the time to sit down and decide what they want to hire an assistant for. And again, like you mentioned, get all your processes in order, organize your business, and then look to see where you need help. And mm -hmm. then you can specifically see what you need in that um, interior design assistant. Because you want to be very clear on your goals and expectations. You want to make sure that you're hiring the right fit for your company. Um, but the only way to do that is to know what you need. It is surprising. Occasionally, I'll get a call from someone that says, I know I need an assistant, but I don't know what I need them to do yet. <laughs> um, that's really difficult because you really want this to work and you really want this to be an extension of your business and to help you grow. And so you really kind of need to get a little bit organized there and decide, you know, what tasks you are really looking for somebody helping, helping you with. I'm glad you're saying this, uh, Hope. And I, I have to tell you, it's one of the things that drives me crazy as a coach. I mean, I teach people how to nail their sales closing conversation, how to market themselves, how to create their pricing structure where they're actually profitable, creating a ladder of services, all different service models that will can sell to any client they want to work with and how to do that. And pricing yourself properly so that you can hire an assistant. So you understand like, how is it even possible to hire an assistant? Because you've been a solopreneur for so long, you can't even imagine having any help. But I'm telling you, if you're pricing yourself properly and you learn how to sell and market, you're going to be able to bring on an assistant and have the relief and run your business like the CEO that you're supposed to be running your business, not as a designer who happens to be trying to run a profitable business. You'll be a business person first and a designer second and actually be running a profitable business. I mean, I don't know how anyone runs a business long term without an assistant of some kind. Right. It's I completely agree. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. it's really brutal. I think I started Expressive Living, which was my art consulting company, which is how I was in the interior design industry for 17 years. In my basement, I started it with $300. I cut my own mats and um, framed my own artwork. It was terrible. I was telling someone the other day, I can't believe anybody bought anything from me. But I started having home art parties. And then when people started saying, can you bring it to the house? I was like, yes. And can you help us frame it? Absolutely. I did everything in my basement by myself. 
And I remember the day I'm like, this is nuts. And it was because I was charging too little. I was trying to be everything to everybody and just, I love what I do and I'm just happy to have a business. And But it wasn't really a business. It was a really time consuming hobby. And when I started pricing myself properly is when I was like, ah, now I can bring on an assistant and stop running myself ragged. And that's what I want for everybody who's watching. It's, it actually drives me crazy. Let me see what Susan here is saying. I was thinking of bringing in an intern, but I need someone who knows the systems and, and not to have to train someone. She said, I'm feeling like this is a better investment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because you don't have to train anyone. <laughs> exactly. That takes a lot of time. Um, <laughs> Stacy's saying, I'm so tired of being everything. Amen. It's so true. But so Stacy, are you priced? And everyone else who's watching, are you priced properly where you're making a profit and you can actually bring on an assistant to do the stuff you don't want to do um, and that you shouldn't be doing because it's not your genius zone. Susan, this meaning a VA is a better investment of my time and effort. Absolutely. And here's the other thing. Your, your assistant is often billable, mm -hmm. right? Because they're yeah. working on a client file. So depending on how yeah. you are billing, if you bill hourly and your assistant is doing the work, your client doesn't know your assistant is doing the work and your hourly rate is your company rate. Uh, it's, it's something that um, is just such a no-brainer for so many people. Wendy's saying, there's nothing like having an assistant. <laughs> I agree, Wendy. More than one in my case. Um, and everyone's saying amen. I must be preaching. <laughs> That's so funny. So if you're in that point where, once again, once corona lifts, and maybe if you're actually working now, we're finding, I'm finding, the clients of mine who do... New construction, a lot of them are still working. Their design firms have not slowed down that much. But the ones who do just um, occupied residential, those are the ones whose businesses have slowed down a little bit more, and it's, is what I'm seeing from my clients. Are you seeing the same? Yeah, I would say it's pretty much the same that way. Yeah, it's, it's scary what's going on right now. But I want everyone to take this time and work on, on your business. And if you have the funds, bringing on an assistant can really be helpful. Let me just see. Uh, Stacy's saying, I just need to make the jump and let go of a lot. But first, have my systems documented. Well, are you saying documenting them yourself before you hire an assistant or actually hiring an assistant to help you document? <laughs> which is coming first. Okay, so Robin's saying, can you give an example of a recent successful pairing of an assistant with a designer? Great question. Um, yeah, I mean, we have this all the time just last month. I mean, I was sending out all my invoicing um, probably April 1st, April 2nd. I send out all the invoicing for March and all of the interior designers are, you know, I don't give specific names of people right now because I, ha I do have confidentiality um, agreements with somebody. Um, if they want me to say their names, they can, or I do have testimonials on my website. Um, but anyway, yeah, basically I've got some that are just doing 3D renders. I've got some that are doing AutoCAD drawings. I've got some that are doing social media management, which seems to be like a huge one. I've got a designer that loves, loves, loves her assistant because she doesn't touch her social media. Her assistant does it for her every single month. And so it's things like that. It, you know, I love it when the clients are all reaching out to me saying, oh, I love this assistant. This is working out really well. I can't wait to start utilizing her more. Um, it's just been really positive. And I've got a great group of clients too on my end. I love the interior designers that I've been working with. And they're just very nice, wonderful people. And they're doing a great job getting through this time as well. Yeah, and I think having an assistant even through this time, even if you're using them less, is 
helpful too because it keeps you going when isn't it funny how when you have no employees you can stay in bed all day you can stay in your pajamas you can do nothing because no one's relying on you for a list of things to do but the minute yeah. you bring on an assistant it's amazing how much more productive you get because you can't lay in bed and not think well what are they going to do today i'm paying them or yeah. right then you feel like responsible for giving people a direction so that's always um really important to think about. I always do better when I have a staff because I feel responsible, right? It makes me yeah. get up and go. Uh, so Wendy's saying it's scary at first, but it is such a, it really is. Um, Wendy, did you have an assistant prior to speaking to me? I can't remember when you hired your assistant. Um, but yeah, it is scary at first because you think, am I going to be able to afford them? And I can maintain them. But this is where Danae's service is so great because they're not an employee. They're a 1099 subcontractor. So if you can't keep them busy, what? If you hire someone and they say to you, if a designer says to you, Danae, I need somebody 10 hours a week, and now they go down to five, what happens? Um, their invoice just changes. I mean, <laughs> we just, they don't, they're, they don't lock into any certain amount. It's an as needed. If they're already budgeting for 10 hours a week, we know that. So if the designer or the design assistant thinks she might go over that, you know, she immediately talks to the interior designer. Some of them do have budgets in mind and they want to limit the hours. Um, but yeah, it's an as needed contract. So we just adjust the invoice according to the hours that were worked. Love it. Okay. So Dale is asking, how do they, how does she, or he, I'm sorry, Dale, I'm not sure. Uh, how do they contact you? Um, the easiest way to contact me is probably email, um, which would be my name, Danae, D-A-N-A-E, at EliteDesignAssistance.com. Will you put so, that in the comments after we're off? Yeah. Go back in and make sure you put your, your website and yeah. your contact information for everyone. Okay, yeah. so when we, I had asked... I love that. Okay, I hired my assistant and had her create the documents. Excellent. Uh, can the assistants work with multiple designers? Another great question. Yes, so they are 1099. So some of them do work with multiple designers, which again is why we have uh, confidentiality clauses in place with contracting. Um, everything is kept confidential between the design assistant and the designer. Um, Obviously, we don't share any of the design work on social media or anything like that. And we do have some designers who are working with clients that they have to have confidentiality because they might be, you know, celebrities or well-known people or whatever. So it's just a nice kind of even thing to have that in there. So it is possible that they are going to be working with a few different designers. You know, and that is, uh, Robin, I know that could feel weird, right? Because they're working for you and you don't want your trade secrets out to another designer. But, Danae, how is that handled with your design assistants not telling that they're working with Robin and they're working with Wendy? Like, how is it covered that they're not sharing? Well, I have another designer who does it this way. Yeah, it's all in the confidentiality. So they're not even talking about other designers or what they're doing. They just focus on like, say, Robin, they would focus on Robin and what she's doing. Um, they're not sharing any information. Now, occasionally, I will have a designer um, that will maybe have enough hours. That's all the design assistant wants to work. And so they might only be working one on one. It just kind of really depends. But as of right now, I haven't had anyone who is very specific to I want, you know, like the need wasn't, they didn't come to me and say, I need a design assistant and I want her to work for me only. It just maybe happened that way due to the number of hours they needed for the service. Gotcha. Okay. And I want to also point out that there's, um, yeah, let me go back to Wendy for a second. That's what I thought, Wendy. I thought when you first started coaching with me, you didn't have an assistant, but I couldn't remember. Um, and I convinced you you needed one. And I'm so glad you have one now and that you love it. Uh, there's a difference between, and I'm saying this because I've been also interviewing OBMs, online business managers. And then there's coaches, right? So there's coaches, there's online business managers, and then there's design assistants. And 
although there is some overlap in some of the areas, it, it's not like a design assistant is going to teach you how to sell or market, right? And it's not like a design assistant is going to tell you how your procedures should be set up. They're going to help you document the way, they'll talk it through with you, I'm sure, but they're gonna document your procedures the way you dictate it to them. Am I saying this properly, Danae? Right, yes, yep, that's okay. absolutely correct. Where an online business manager now will do more strategy with you as well when it comes to your, your procedures, and a coach is helping you with your entire direction of your company and teaching you the skills you need to be the CEO of your company and make a profit and all that stuff. So, but there's all these different people you can hire to help you get to the next level. So it's, it is hard, I think, as a designer to know where they're at and what they need. So, you know, I always say, hop on the phone with me in one of my consults and we'll figure it out. And I'm not going to say you need me if you don't. I will tell you, no, I think you need an online business manager or I think you need a design assistant to help you with this, that, and the other thing. Um, so I think everyone should have an assistant to run their business. If they're doing enough business that it warrants it, that's the very, that's the very first step is to get somebody to um, do the things that are not within their genius zone that doesn't lock them up. So Susan's saying that's such a good point, Nancy. Accountability to others is a good motivator. <laughs> it really is. I used to have two employees who worked in my house when I had expressive living art framing and accessories. And listen, we all know as entrepreneurs, some days we just don't want to work. Um, and... <laughs> And you got to get out of bed if you have someone who's, who's going to be on the phone with you going, what do you want me to do today, right? Or they're going to be coming to your front door, which in my case, that's what I had for 17 years. Uh, so I hope this was helpful to many of you watching today. Uh, hope, Nancy, how do I set up a consult? You go to my website, nancygenzacoffer.com, and on the top, you'll see on the top right, you'll see how to set up a consult with me right through the website. Click it and it's done. So anything else that you want to mention today, Danae? No, oh, I mean, I think it's just one of those things. If it's looking like you're wanting to hire somebody, just start. I mean, like you said, now's a great time to go through your processes and your business and figure out where you need help and how that's going to look for you and your business. And and it is a great thing. I mean, one thing that we are going to be covering next week in your membership is the turn on investment. So that will be in that um, presentation, whether you're using a design assistant for billable hours or even non billable hours, what a return on investment looks like. So it's definitely. I can't there. wait for you to do that. I love yeah. it. So yeah, for those of you who don't know about my membership site, I have a membership site that has about 100 PDFs and trainings in there. And I bring in assist, um, ex experts like Danae to do specific trainings. We add two, we're, we're supposed to, we, I only commit to adding one new training or PDF a month, but lately I've been adding three or four, um, two, three or four almost every month, more trainings and more assistance for anyone who's part of my membership site. So my one-on-one -on -one clients, my group clients, automatically get my membership site and my membership site only people, which is a subscription program. So I'm so excited for your training for next week. Yay. Okay. So thank you for being here, Danae. I can't believe it's almost 530. I hope everyone is safe and healthy and remains that way. Um, I will be here every week, especially during the social distancing time to help keep you guys occupied, motivated, focusing on your businesses and not giving up during this time. Now's the time to dig in even more than before, even though it's harder. Double down on your marketing, double down on your contact with other people, do as much as you can virtually. And if you really wanna jump to another level bring on a coach or bring on a design assistant to get all those to-dos done. If you're not sure what you're supposed to do, then you probably need someone like me. If you already know what you're supposed to do and you've had this like endless long yellow page of list of things that have to get done, 
then call Danae and bring on a design assistant and let's get it done so that when this lifts and everybody wants to hire you, you are ready. Anything you want to add to that, Danae? No, I think that sounds great. Yes, I too just want everyone to stay safe and healthy and we'll get through this and we'll be stronger coming out. So we will be we will be stronger together that's for sure so thank you for Danae for being here thank you everyone for watching and i will see you next week on weekend wind down bye everyone thank you nancy Thanks. bye <laughs>